Hey what's up guys, this is Free Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. Today we are going to talk about liquid donuts. Yes, that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but you can see the result is visually pleasing and uh, it's a fun technique. So why don't you learn it, right? Yes, basically you will learn how to fill up any object, in this case it's a torus or a donut, with fluid simulations giving them different densities to achieve beautiful mixing patterns. Yeah, sounds complex, but you will see it's fun and easy. So you can see here are some stills. They also look lovely. This is an easy test with the mixing. I like this green one. Yes, the open VDB meshing here is quite beautiful. A simple test with turbulence. Also nice. Something quite similar, but also a nice pattern here. And a close-up shot there. So, if you want to learn that stuff, this is the right place. Let's get started. Alright guys, so why don't we have some fun in Cinema 4D? Maybe you start with a plane, so we have something as a floor. And next, you should grab an object you want to fill with fluids. So, this is our topic, mixing different fluids in a donut or a torus. But of course you can take whatever object you like, like a figure or something. But in my case I grab a torus and I like the numbers like this. Quite lovely numbers. Put it on the floor. Alright, so this is a nice subdivision. So don't work with something like this because it gives you ugly edges here. So be reasonably uh, round here. All right. Since we want to work inside the donut, this view is not so helpful and this is not so helpful too. So we should put an, where is it? The display tag on it. And we use something like lines. This is quite complex, but when you put it to isopalms, this is the perfect view for our, for our task here. Next, I would say we put an emitter inside the torus. Put it to a spherical emission because it should be quite organic and I don't want to emit from a rectangle. All right, so what is happening here? Yes, this is not colliding with the donut. Just give me the word donut here. So I would go to X particle tags and put a collider on it. And we want the particles to collide with the inside. And we neither need bounce nor we need friction. Let's see. Yes, this is quite promising. And if this is all you want to learn here, yeah, you can already be quite satisfied. But I think we can do even better. So maybe we just switch the display to circle filled. This is give, giving us a better representation of the radius of these particles. And um, maybe we should also emit a lot more of them, like 8000. And by the way, when you set the radius to one, you can see you get little spheres. Oops. But um, for, for this demonstration's sake, Free is good enough, but when you want to have more resolution in it, of course you need more particles here with less radius there. Something like this. Giving you a better resolution, right? But we go to 8000 and free. And overall this is quite boring. So maybe now is the time to put in a fluid FX. And this should be instantly quite interesting. No. <laughs> I promised too much. Maybe we should switch the emission to shot, put it to 8000. Let's see what is happening now. Whoa, so this is super brutal. Wow, in instantly from in one frame this is exploding. This is happening because fluid FX giving these particles physical behavior. And when you, when you want to compress like atoms, like particles of fluid, in this tight radius, uh, they will have some explosiveness to them. So this is like 
it's more like a black hole like uh, giving a real brutal shockwave here but uh, so the bigger you make the radius of your your initial sphere the less explosive it is but maybe you want to have it small this is too intense for you so in this case you would go to the fluid of x and change the internal pressure put it to 50 let's see takes out a little bit of the pressure put it to 20 uh, already too smooth maybe okay i guess i like i like this number yeah this is totally fine for me so it can be explosive but not too explosive in general when you work with fluids you don't want to have compressed particles but in this case it's super helpful if you want uh, don't want it you should go to a mode like hexagonal you see the particles don't collide with each other they're not so densely packed so they have uh, a distance from each other or you could go to um, something like regular but let's go back to shot because this is what we want yes this is a good start should i make an another emitter hmm let me think about for a minute no not for a minute for five seconds so yeah let's grab another emitter because this is a little bit boring let's go to the display and say this one is orange yeah something like this what is happening all right we already get some mixing maybe give me more frames there and this line here this is quite interesting so yes this is mixing but i think we can get even better mixing behaviors so this is a little bit boring and um i think it has to do with the external data with the fluid data let's talk about density so both of these ones have a density of a thousand and thousand is the physical correct value in real life for water it's a thousand kilograms per square meter i think this is the right description but um all kind of materials objects they have different densities for example if you want to have a water that acts like an apple you would go with 700 because an apple have has a density of 700 um, standard rock has 2700 lead or lead i don't know how it's called as something like no it's yeah this is quite high mercury hope i'm not uh, fooling you is it something like this i'm not sure and uh, concrete is something like that air is 1.3 steel 7800 so yeah every material in real life has different densities let's go back to a thousand so if you want to have the green particles being heavier and pushing the yellow the orange ones away you could say this one has a less lower density now when they come together it should be like yeah green is pushing through the, the orange ones pushing them aside and you get lovely curls here so this is a yes look at this one it's beautiful so if you want to have better mixing of your fluids you should play with the settings with the density settings yes so what else could i explain um here when you go to this one we already played with these parameters we could maybe be a little bit more interesting here put some more um, more emitters inside so where is it display we put this one as red red now we mix free fluids this is nice but i think uh, the density is the same so maybe we should this one should change this one 
And when I do this one, I could already do some blue particles. Let's make them blue and change the density to maybe 200. So we have 200, 1500, 500 and 1000. This could be more interesting, let's see. Yes, really lovely curls, I like it. So this is the main principle of this tutorial. Wow, yes, this is uh, giving nice patterns. Um, maybe before we go to the next section, viscosity here makes it act more like honey. So maybe we make all of them more like honey. Vorticity giving them some fake little turbulence like um, like a turbulence for free let's see what is this doing reminds me of a certain logo so yes you get more little twists and think this um, looks even better maybe surface tension makes your particles act more like, um, how can I say it? It tries to minimize the surface. Therefore, big parts like this red one will form smaller, rounder shapes because it tries to minimize the surface, all right? So when I say, putting this one to 100, I'm pretty sure you will get more smaller sphere-like structures. Let's see. Mm. Didn't change so much, but it already looked quite cool. So maybe get rid of the floor. Yeah, so I mean, these are nice structures here, right? One last thing. Let's try to put, a, let's try to put a turbulence in it. And I just like curl noise. And I like uh, to put this blend and add a little bit lower. And um, let's say after 60, the strength will reduce from 10 to 0. Give me a couple more frames. Let's see what this turbulence is adding to it. Okay. <laughs> Last test here before we go to the next part. Yes. Oof. This is beautiful. This is just beautiful. Yes. Super nice behavior. I would love to eat this liquid donut. Nice. Really nice shapes. All right. Cool. So this is the basics. Let's go on. Hey guys, just a super quick intermission. I just wanted to say thank you so far for following my channel, 3D Bonfire. So far, three months. This has been an amazing ride. Uh, so much fun here to share this knowledge. Uh, I started with these ones. Yeah, you seem to like digital nature. Now I'm going more into the X particle stuff, explosions, um, fluids, fire, smoke, oh, all the good stuff. All the, all the fun stuff. So this will definitely develop into something super cool. And I'm totally passionate about it. Um, just one small thing. If you give me a little love back and support me in doing these tutorials, you can do me a huge favor and share some love if you want to become a tutorial supporter. Of course, this is uh, you don't have to do it. Uh, you always can enjoy this stuff. But when you want something additional, so for all the YouTube tutorials, there will always be a little bit bonus content for my patrons. Uh, so if you are really into this tutorial learning stuff, this is the way to go. Also, you will get access to my scene files and you feel like an amazing person to uh, share the love and uh, help me support me doing better tutorials. Yeah, so yeah, 3D Bonfire on Patreon now. That's great news. Also. Uh, this is me, by the way, Marcus Gonza 3D. I live in Berlin and I'm an artist working here. And if you want to get a feeling what would be the next tutorial and stuff, yeah, why don't you consider following me? So you can see I uploaded these donuts and someone said, hey, Marcus, maybe you can do a tutorial about it. And I said, yes, that would be great to share. 
And this is how this developed into a tutorial on 3D Bonfire. So thanks guys, the tutorial will continue from here on. Next, we should talk about how to turn your software uh, preview here into something lovely you could put on your Instagram. So you want some quality like this. You already seen this ones, but you need particle shading, some textures, light. Uh, I think we can't talk about everything, but you can see uh, you need some nice representation for your particles. You can mesh them into an open VDB volume or you can render them as spheres uh, in different sizes. So this is quite lovely. And um, yeah, I already showed these ones to you. This is more like a software preview, but with a nice shading. So we should talk about how to visually represent your particles. All right, so maybe we just study this scene file. This is pretty simple. Where's my viewport? Come on, okay, there it is. Um, all right, so we have a representation of our colored uh, X particles with little spheres. And um, yeah, so basically this is super simple. These are my two emitters, maybe you switch one off. So if you want to, want to render one emitter, this is also quite beautiful, but we want to show both. The trick is go to your emitter, put an octane tag on it, go to particle rendering, and activate the geometry. If you uh, put a sphere, for example, or whatever object you like into the geometry, this will be the representation of your particle. So um, the blue one has a representation of particle one of the yellow one, and the yellow one has a representation of the blue particle. So, okay. This would be otherwise other way around, but uh, you get it. You could change the particle radius, for example. So you see now these ones get bigger and you get a nice border here. So whatever you put in your particle will be the representation. So this is quite nice. Actually, I really like this border. So uh, why don't we use this one? But you could also go to your material, maybe make a specular and uh, go with the roughness a little bit up. I don't know. Um, yeah, Ooh, this is looking nice. So maybe that it is so black is depending on the on the depth of the specular. No, okay, I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, this is looking super nice. So already learned something, right? You just uh, use particles as a representation. Cool, cool stuff. Next, I think the interesting thing here would be how to use an HDRI. Because now the scene is super black, maybe you and your Octane setup have still has white into this default environment, which gives you an overall white um, illumination, which looks interesting, but super dull. So get rid of this one, switch to black, and now use an Octane Sky and put an HDRI into it. You want to do it like this. So you put your environment and here, click on the image and then here you put the HDRI into it. You can see the basic values here are one, one, one. Remember these ones because you can see, in my case, I go a little bit crazy with these values. And this is really um, a useful trick here. So you can see this, HDRI looks super boring and you think mm, this isn't working for me, but you can really go crazy with these numbers because you have a lot of exposure values in your HDRI. So you could put a lot of power into it and now slowly change the gamma. So when I go higher here, now I go more into the red tones. See, this is getting too vibrant here, but I think this is a quite lovely look. Let's see what happens with 15, too dark. I stay just with 20. So this is beautiful. Here, the rotation, I always love to play with this one. So maybe first the rotation Y in the Y axis. I angle this middle line a little bit uh, beneath the horizon because now this is quite intense. Uh, I need to correct myself. 
this looks super nice but when i go down maybe a little bit okay this is already too far maybe 2.5 now i get a mixture here now the floor isn't so vibrant like uh, in this case but uh oops we are missing a zero uh minus um, zero too much yes this is the value i prefer and of course the rotation y just uh gives you different looks here so yeah i mean all of these angles look nice i like the the highlight there so maybe this would be already the lighting for the scene super beautiful so now you learned how to color your particles how to render them how to light your scene in an easy and efficient way by the way i use path tracing and i think also for the final rendering 200 or something like this could also be enough and um yeah not so complex stuff here maybe you are also interested in let's see see so basic material looks a bit boring but with some nice sketch lines here this looks way more interesting right so this is an easy trick to make your renderings um, much more interesting and the thing is just in the diffuse you just grab the tile shader i already applied it to it so the tiles and i put it to squares but you have so much up um, um versions here so uh yeah you can really go crazy with this ones sometimes lines is also nice uh, let's see sawtooth i mean i don't really need that crazy stuff and maybe maybe just uh let's go a little bit crazy I mean, this is additional you can already quit this uh, tutorial here but i just want to see what happens when i put these tiles maybe into a displacement so this could be interesting uh it's a little bit dense here so what happens when i put this also here <laughs> okay this is because um settings i think the shade oh it's already at 2000 2k so it has to be inside of here put this to 2k and uh, maybe even put it to 4k and um, let's see what happens when i put this one to black or some some gray tone so this is cool right uh, give me a two here to catch even more shadows on the floor i mean i don't like the pattern that much but hey this is adding something right all right cool so um now you got the tools to make your render beautiful okay quick addition if you are particularly interested in this scene file you want to know how i set this up the open vdb jelly stuff here the particles the light and everything this will be shared on my patreon and in the bonus lesson there i will quickly talk about the materials and basically the whole scene quick reminder this was this rendering let's see so yeah beautiful all right one last thing so if you like numbers like i do these videos could be super helpful for you i give you a short preview here but i have to say this is patreon exclusive i did like um, 18 tests and compared to different settings and maybe this could be helpful for you so but you get a pre free preview here so you can see these are the settings for this donut number six the fluid modifier emitter settings turbulence um, the further emitter settings here and the collider tag and in this case i changed the viscosity so for the blue and the yellow emitter here i have a viscosity of 10 but for version 5 i switch it to 150 and obviously you can see that these kind of shapes hold together uh, in a quite different way with higher viscosity i mean this is not surprising but it's good to see and um, yeah so if you like these compare videos uh, i made a couple of them and i hope you will enjoy them too so hope you learned a lot guys see you in the next tutorial bye